Welcome to part 8 in my series of Model Railroad Train Operations videos. I'm Burr Stewart and I'm the owner of this Model Railroad in Seattle, Washington. And today we'll be taking a westbound manifest freight that's just passed through the Cascade Tunnel in Washington State and is proceeding through the Skycomish Yard on its way down to Everett, Washington and terminating in Seattle's Interbay Yard. Today's train is being hauled by three of the new scale trains SD45 locomotives. These are absolutely gorgeous and perfect for this type of train in the era I model, which is 1973. For today's video, I've inserted camera footage looking out the cab window, which is taken with a small GoPro type action cam on a flat car, which has some clearance issues. So throughout the video, you'll see sometimes where the camera hits the trees or rocks on the side of the road and gets knocked off. I apologize for this, but we'll do the best we can. In 1973, cabooses were still required on all trains, which is another reason I really enjoy modeling this era. Next, the train passes past Mount Index and what we call the Index Loop. Those cabooses in the upper right-hand corner are at the very far north end of the Bellingham staging yard, which will come into play in some future video. That S-curve that the locomotives are going through right now has 28-inch radius curves in both directions with about a one-foot straight section. That upside down chair in the aisle is just proof that it's been quite a while since we had a group of people over for operations, thanks to that global pandemic. Looks to me like our camera's going to hit that rock. Yep. This highly staggered through Girder Bridge is a replica of a real bridge on this route up along Highway 2 towards Stevens Pass. It doesn't have clearance for our GoPro camera though. These 3,600 horsepower locomotives were originally built starting in 1965 and they lasted about 20 years on the Burlington Northern. I have to say these are the perfect locomotives for this job. In the 1970s one of these locomotives replaced three of the older F units or Jeeps. Having 20 cylinders on their crankshaft, they did have some mechanical problems on the prototype, but I haven't noticed any problems on the model railroad yet.
Well, as we approach Lowell Junction, it looks like the dispatcher has aligned us to take the siding, and we'll work our way into Delta Yard. You can see from the third rail there that we have a three-foot gauge interchange in Everett, which of course is totally fictitious, but makes for a lot of modern railroading fun, which you may have seen in part four of this video series. I scratch built that diamond crossing to the right in order to provide my narrow gauge yard with access to the Weyerhaeuser Mill B in the Delta Yard Complex. And now our train is going to come to a stop on the siding in Delta Yard where we'll demonstrate a nice gradual stop and engine shutdown. The engine shutdown sequence in these locomotives is really something to behold. Just listen after we turn off the lights and spool down the prime mover. A short blast means the engine is stopped. Rotating beacon off, headlights off, engine off. Now for some residual spitting. Wait for it. You gotta love it. Okay, now that we shut down those locomotives for no obvious reason, let's start them back up again, pick up some cars, and head on into Seattle. In the prototype, we actually would have been dropping off cars here, but I only had uh, 17 cars in this train coming out of Skykomish, and I felt that with this much motive power, we ought to have a longer train. So if we pick up the cars on the siding next to the train, we'll have a 27 car train, which seems a little bit more reasonable for a layout of this size. Plus it gives us a chance to do a little bit of switching so it's not all just through running. I know you'd like to see a little variety in these consists, but these are brand new engines I just onboarded and I'm enjoying their first operation before they get merged in with the other locomotives in the fleet. You could see I was using the brake there. I spooled the engines up a little bit and then released the brake. Easy does it. Bang. You might recognize that cut of cars from an earlier video. I'm not really paying attention to the waybills at the moment. I'm just trying to create a video that shows off a westbound through freight coming into town. Picking up cars in Everett is not something that a through freight would do because they would be handled by a transfer from Everett down to Seattle. But as I said, in this case, I just wanted this train to be a little longer as we ran along the coast route.
That brakeman seems to have had his hand sawed off. I don't know when that happened. At least he can hold on with the other hand. Now at this point we have to shove back in order to uh, get clearance with the switch we need to take in order to get on the coast route. I don't know about you, but I'm a little nervous about pushing this long a train backwards, but we'll do the best we can. Those locomotives are smooth. I should have stopped uh, to make sure we had air pressure and the brake system and all that, but we don't have all day, like I'm always saying. But we do like to blow our horns. Well, as you can see in the inset, we're taking a right turn there on what's called the High Line. And we're going to go down to Everett Junction and proceed along the coast route down to uh, Seattle's Inner Bay Yard. On the prototype we'd have to go through a tunnel to get to this point, but I just didn't have room on the layout for that. I had these locomotives set up so that at the maximum speed they run about 30 miles an hour, which works really well for a layout of this size. And the speed that we're running at right now is 12 out of 28 uh, on the DCC throttle. So this is half speed. You can see it's uh, really all you need. That seawall is manufactured by Chooch Industries recently and is actually a copy of the seawall that runs between Seattle and Everett. So I had to try it out on the layout. You can see in the foreground and the far distance I also tried using crushed gravel. They both uh, look pretty much like the prototype. I'm not sure which one I like better. What do you think? Now our train is coming around the corner at Golden Gardens Park in Ballard, approaching the bridge number four across the Salmon Bay part of the Lake Washington Ship Canal.
I'll give you the fireman's side cab view for our passage through this bridge. This was uh, kit bashed from a Walther's double deck girder bridge by a neighbor friend of mine who widened it so that it had enough clearance for this double track curve. The prototype bridge number four is a huge iconic structure, a very straight passageway, and I clearly didn't have room for that here, unfortunately. So now we're coming along a cut that approaches the inner bay yard from the north. And that's the Nickerson Street overpass we're approaching. Oops, I forgot to turn the headlight on. There we go. As you can see, we're now approaching the Inner Bay Yard in the northern part of downtown Seattle. The Southern Pacific engines on the left in the insert came in from one of the pool trains that frequently moved between Portland and Seattle. Our train is taking the A track, uh, which is used frequently for arrivals like this. The hill in the background is a neighborhood called Queen Anne behind the engine terminal there, and we'll be bringing our engines back to the engine terminal as soon as we stop the train. On the upper level, as we mentioned before, you can see the Bellingham staging yard. It even has a Milwaukee Road train ready to come down since Milwaukee had trackage rights after the BN merger to run along this same coast route. That'll be a fun future video for those of you that are Milwaukee fans like me. You can see we've just crossed underneath the Dravis Street overpass, which is a marvelous rail fanning spot if you're ever in Seattle. It's not even bad on my layout here. Well, four days after leaving Chicago, our train appears to have finally arrived in Seattle's Inner Bay Yard. We bring this thing to a stop, and before we put away the engines, let's just check on a little of our model railroading paperwork. Our train has pulled into the A track, the first of what we call arrival departure track, and the engines will go over into the engine terminal. So we'll take our car card packet, separate the engines from the car cards, stick the car cards in the A-track bin, and stick the engines over there in the engine terminal bin. And this way we'll be able to find everything later. Looks like our pack of cards is complete. I like to put them upside down because that's the narrow part of the car card and it's easier for handling. Well, now we can have a little fun with cameras. This is a GoPro-type camera called an Acaso that I have stuck on a gondola car there. And this way we get to watch as if we were a crew member on the ground there and watch the engines pull away and head down to the crossover where they can back up on the main line to go into the engine terminal, which is on the other side of the main line. You can also see the cell phone camera on the right-hand side of the shot that's about to take pictures of the engines moving along the track. 
I wouldn't normally expose you to all these cameras, but I was filming for a recent clinic that I did on how to edit model railroad videos, and this footage uh, made sense to use for both that clinic and for this video. Now you can see in the main screen the action cam footage and on the upper inset is the view from the cell phone which is in a tripod and you'll see in a second I realize I need to be moving that tripod. There we go. Now you can see that on the right hand side the cell phone moving around and on the inset you can see the view of the engines as they work their way down the main line back towards the interbay engine facility. Okay, now our engines are coming along the main line up to the turnout which leads to the engine terminal. So we have to stop, let the brakeman get out and go flip the switch and then we'll be able to proceed off the main and into the engine terminal. That switch is actuated by one of those blue point manual turnout controls because it's a long way from the front of the layout. You'll notice that I stopped to let the switchman get out and flip the turnout but I forget all about stopping to let him get back on the train after he returns it to its normal position. Oops. Now we're entering the Interbay engine facility at what I would say is an awfully high rate of speed. Let's slow that puppy down. It's a beautiful threesome and I've really enjoyed showing it to you. These are the Scale Trains SD45s once again. They look like they're ready for a little servicing time after running across the country like that. Now we get our second chance in this video to listen to that beautiful engine shutdown sequence. Even though in the prototype in 1973 they really weren't in the habit of shutting down locomotives, that came much later after fuel efficiency became more important. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is my eighth uh, in a series of videos on operations on my Burlington Northern Railroad in the Seattle region. I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and enjoy whatever future videos we have in store. In the meantime, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much, much fun with trains. Not to mention the endless spitting that these locomotives do after they're supposedly shut down. Too funny.